The Standard Chartered Bonus Saver account is giving up to 7.88% per annum on our first $100,000. What says 7.88% per annum? That means if I were to put in $100,000, I would get $7,880 of interest a year. Hey, but wait, uh, the UOB1 account is claiming to give us up to 7.8% per annum. Well, wow, Lao, both accounts look so good. Which one should I choose? Today, I will compare the bonus saver account against the UOB1 account, and hopefully, with my research, you can see which would be the better account to park your money if you only have interest enough cash for just one high yielding account. Let's start with the bonus saver first. And to be honest, there is no way Standard Chartered Bank is going to give us 7.88% per annum that easily. So these are the criteria. In order to earn the high interest of 7.88%, there are five categories that we have to hit. Let us go through each category to see how easy it is to hit all five categories. So the first one will be the spending category. In this category, there are three spending tiers. If you spend less than $500 a month, then sorry lah friend, you only earn the base interest of 0.05% per annum. But oh, if you can hit the next tier, which is a monthly spending of between $500 to $1,999 a month, then congratulations my friend, the interest will now become 1.3% per annum. This 1.3% per annum comprises of a base interest of 0.05% per annum and a bonus interest rate of 1.25% per annum and if you are the type uh, that can easily spend $2,000 and above then I guess congratulations to you because you get a bonus interest of 2% per annum with the base interest of 0.05% your account will yield up to 2.05% per annum for the first $100,000. Hey, but wait, uh, let's not get too excited just yet. Uh. The bonus saver account will only recognize transactions via the bonus saver card. And this card uh, can be either a debit or a credit card. However, other than providing bonus interest, this card serves no significant cashback, la, rewards, air miles. So uh, if I were to spend $2,000 a month to earn that bonus interest of 2%, I have to be willing to forego all my credit card rewards, my air miles, etc. I, I don't know, la, this part uh, is definitely a deal breaker at least to me. By the way, our friend, is this video adding any value to you? If it is, can I just encourage you to drop a like as it shows YouTube that this video is providing value and this in turn will allow YouTube to provide it to more like-minded people like yourself. Let us take a look at the second category. Okay lah, this category quite easy to hit. All we need to do is credit our salary to the bonus saver and we get an extra 2.5% per annum. But please take note, nah, there is a minimum salary credit of $3,000 to be eligible for this extra interest. The third category, my friends, will be the invest category. So if we are willing to invest in eligible products in Standard Chartered Bank, we will be able to earn a bonus interest of 1.5% per annum. Let's take a look at what constitutes an eligible product. So we can see uh, that the main criteria is to invest $30,000 into a unit trust. Ah yeah, this one you know me like, even if I want to buy a unit trust, I'd rather buy it via a platform such as DollarDex where there is a 0% sales charge. I don't know lah, but buying through the banks, you have to expect a sales charge of anywhere between one to 3%. So what this means that uh, we are already down on our investment immediately once our funds are invested and our unit trust has to appreciate by that 1 to 3% sales charge just to break even. So sorry lah friend, I mean the way I see it, uh, this category don't even appeal to me at all. Uh. The fourth category my friend will be the insure category. So basically uh, we have to buy insurance to earn this extra 1.5% per annum lah. And we have to be willing to purchase an insurance product with a minimum annual premium of $12,000 a year which works out to be a monthly premium of $1,000 a month. And I'm quite sure like, that if we were to go to a standard chartered bank right now, your bankers would definitely encourage us to buy a $1,000 a month endowment policy from Prudential to hit this criteria. Why Prudential? Uh? This is because Standard Chartered Bank works with Prudential and hence the insurance specialist will be promoting Prudential products to allow us to hit the insure category. I personally don't see anything wrong with this criteria. After all, endowment policies work as a forced savings and can help us reach our retirement goals. 
But if we do not have the budget to set aside $1,000 a month, then I don't really think that we should be considering this category because breaking an endowment policy is not recommended and this will definitely result in an instant loss. Aiyah, so long story short, since I don't really want to up my commitment level, this criteria will not appeal to me. Okay, so let's look at the last criteria and it is the bill payment criteria. So friend, this criteria is pretty straightforward. All we need to do to fulfill this is to make three eligible bill payments of at least $50 from our bonus saver to earn a bonus 0.33% per annum. Hey, so friends, now that we have gone through each component, you must be thinking, so what is a more realistic interest? Personally, I think the easier components will be the salary crediting as well as the bill payment category. Doing so will easily net us 2.88% per annum on our first $100,000. I am seriously reluctant to use a bonus saver card for spending as this will mean that I will have to forgo my credit card air miles as well as cashbacks. And if you are like me and want to earn from your various credit card rewards, then I'm sure that you will not find it worthwhile in maximizing this option. Anyways, spending between $500 to $1,999 a month via the bonus saver card will give us 4.13% per annum and anything more than $2,000 will give us 4.88% per annum. Let's compare the bonus saver with the UOB1 account right now. Okay, so at one glance, we can see that the UOB1 account is offering us two simple steps to earn up to 7.8% per annum. Wow! But as you know, up to 7.8% per annum is just marketing lah. And more often than not, the devil is in the details. So if we were to click this box over here, we will see that the maximum effective interest rate is 5% per annum for $100,000 of savings. Which is also very good lah, come on. What I personally find attractive about this account is its simplicity. There are just two steps and they are to spend a minimum of $500 a month on any eligible UOB credit or debit cards. You know, I've spoken to so many friends uh, holding the UOB1 account uh, and so many of them uh, have the misconception that they have to use a UOB1 card. Hey friend, come on lah, read the T's and C's lay, this is not the case. We can also use cards such as the UOB Ladies card as well as the UOB Evo card to meet the $500 a month spending criteria. The next step my friends will be to credit a minimum salary of $1,600 a month into your UOB1 account and boom, you'll get 5% per annum for $100,000 of savings. Hence, if you were to ask me, uh, Ah yeah, my choice is quite clear lah. I'm definitely sticking to the UOB1 account as the steps are not that complicated and overall the interest of 5% per annum is so much easier to achieve. I also have so many credit card choices as compared to the bonus saver account and overall even if I were to fulfill the criteria of spending more than $2,000 of spending via the bonus saver card as well as the salary crediting and bill payment, I will only earn 4.88% per annum which is still lower than the UOB1 account's interest of 5% per annum. And um, so my friends, I'm sure you must be wondering, so which UOB credit card is good? I've already solved that issue for you. I've done up a video that compares a UOB1 card against a UOB Ladies card as well as a UOB Evo card. So if you're not sure which card to pair with your UOB1 account to earn that 5% per annum or that $100,000 of cash savings that you have, then I'll recommend that you watch this video over here. And as always, if you're someone very keen in personal finance, then do consider subscribing to this channel as personal finance is a topic that interests me a lot. And every new subscriber just gives me the affirmation that I am producing content that is valuable to someone out there.